Check one, two. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor TJ, and I am so thrilled that you've decided to worship with us today online. You may be looking for the announcements, which usually come at the beginning of our worship service. But we've found that so many people are only watching portions of online internet views. So what we've decided to do is to put our announcements below in the comment section. So if you're looking for those, you can find those there. But this way we can get right to the heart of worship, that we can come before God and that we can do that together. So let's go ahead and get into the service. And I hope that you have a blessed day and a blessed experience. Let us praise God together. Let us prepare our hearts for worship, for we come before God with a thankful heart and knowing that God is here for us and that he claims us and creates a space for us. And so let us worship the Lord.
Jesus in prayer. O oh God, beyond time, we are an impatient people. As the days grow shorter and the darkness longer, teach us to wait with faith. In this time of worship, open our eyes and hearts to the needs to be wise and thankful. May every day be a day of gratitude for your compassion and grace. Through the guidance of your spirit, lead each one of us in the pathways that make for peace. In the name of Emmanuel, God with us, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today is taken from Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. Because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The beginning of wisdom is the most sincere desire for instruction, and concern for instruction is love of her. And love of her is the keeping of her laws, and giving heed to her laws is assurance of immortality. And immortality brings one near to God. So the desire for wisdom leads to a kingdom. The next hymn is Open My Eyes That I May See, found on page 454 for the PowerPoint. from Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. 
Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. that are divided. Five who were prepared with their oil and their wicks, 
and five who were not. And we often take this parable, the story of these ten women, and we say, well, look at the dedication, the faith that was lived out of the five that were prepared. And then we look at the five who are not prepared, and we see how their lives were focused more upon themselves, how they were just living like as if they were living for themselves and selfishly and not having that same faith. And we see how they placed minimum effort in hopes to receive the same thing that the others who were dedicated receive. Ladies, if we're honest with ourselves this morning, you know that there are things that are going to surprise you. No matter how devoted you are to your cause or to your husband or to the church, things will surprise you. Something that you weren't prepared for, like a lamp on a projector, is going to happen. Also take example that of parenthood. Anyone who is preparing for parenthood will possibly read every book that's available, but those, argue, those books begin to argue with each other. They each up with each other. They begin to say, well, don't hold your baby too much, or that you can't hold your baby too much, or feed your child this for this amount of time, or this for this amount of time. And any book that tells you that potty training is a fun and exciting time for you and your child, just get rid of that book, I promise you. <laughs> and men, despite everything that the Boy Scouts have taught you about preparedness, things are going to happen. You're not going to be prepared for everything. Now, I don't say this this morning because I think that sermons and lessons of the past that have been taught on this parable and this idea are lackluster and that they aren't correct. For surely our faith needs to be engaged in not being a part of this foolish living that has been taught in the past. But... If we are so devoted to our faith that we push ourselves into a false sense of denial that tells us that we are fully and 100% ready for Christ's return, then we are fooling ourselves for the first time that the Messiah came into this world was in the most unlikely of times. It is the most unlikely of ways that he appears. It has caught the whole world off guard, and that actually is what makes the story so fantastic and so powerful. And if you don't think that God is capable of that same type of entrance the second time around, then your faith has started to fool you. No, instead of focusing on the dedication of some and the questionable dedication of others in these ten bridesmaids, I want us to instead consider this morning what is happening to these women as they wait. Who is, in, who is supporting them? Who is in their ear? Who is encouraging them? Who is there on the days that it seems hopeless? And who is there on the days when they are greatly productive? It seems to me that those who are prepared with the extra oil, with the extra wicks, who are there to keep their lamps trimmed and burning, that these women have created a community for themselves where they speak to each other and encourage each other. They drink a glass of wine together in the evening and they eat ice cream in the difficult times from sheets and they're told that it's going to be all right. And when they put in a long, hard day of work and they feel as if they are unappreciated as they wait, they tell each other, thank you for reminding me of the work that I need to be doing tomorrow. These five women whose lamps will remain lit are supporting one another. They are thankful for one another. And there is wisdom in that type of living. But as for the five who were caught off guard, at first they were excited. They would polish the lamp daily and they would take care of it and they placed it in their home as a prominent location as if to show it off. It was a piece that said, look who I am and what I have. But these women, they never go out to fill the lamp with anything. My marriage isn't to... Uh, and it isn't anyone else's business. Who They don't need to lift the top off of it and see how much oil is in there. I don't need to be judged by others. I don't need someone telling me how to prepare myself. 
And on bad days when the weight is too much for them and they start to feel unappreciated, they know the sentiment that is before them. It is that attitude that we get when we look unappreciated and it's an attitude that says, oh, the hell with it. Let it burn. I don't care. But that's a lie. It's a lie. We do care. Our minds become poisoned with the negativity that our work isn't appreciated. That the idea that we cannot live up to the expectations of others, in the idea that we couldn't ever be enough for this groom that hasn't arrived yet. The idea that we could do it alone, and the idea that we don't need other people. And being that we're speaking specifically this morning of bridemaids, I'll stick with the imagery. Hollywood plays with the comedic troupe in many movies, but it is truly a thing for brides and grooms to feel cold feet. The couples that talk about their cold feet find that their concerns can be wiped away when they come together and share their fears. And the couples who aren't comfortable with the idea of sharing those fears with, each, fears with each other find that they arrive to the day unprepared, for they are uncertain of the other's feelings. And their fears change their truth of perception. This Bible lesson from the Old Testament from Song of Solomon this morning speaks of wisdom, and it speaks of wisdom in female's terms. This is a Jewish understanding of the embodiment of knowledge. And in Christian circles, specifically those where people were first Jewish uh, learners and then moved to Christianity, they see wisdom as the embodiment of a woman in that persona, and they move the Holy Spirit to that. The wisdom is what we believe these five bridesmaids have prepared themselves with. And those with the lack of wisdom who live foolishly do not have this Holy Spirit in which they have spoken to and have received their truth, their knowledge, their comfort, and their need from. But wisdom is also knowing that we have to have support from family and from friends. Wisdom is knowing that we need to be thankful in all moments. Wisdom is about letting, not letting negativity rule the day. Let me suggest something of God that isn't often mentioned as we look at this Bible verse this morning. These ten bridesmaids are awaiting one husband. And when that husband returns to these ten women, we hear in the Bible verse how he scolds the five women that are not ready and that he accepts the other ones. But a few days later, do you not think that the discussion is going to come to the five bridesmaids that were prepared? How did you allow the other five to escape? To go unprepared? How did you ignore them as part of the people for it's one groom who has chosen these ten bridesmaids. How did you not try to help them along? How did you not show them the same love that I have shown to you? We've supported one another through some difficult times. We have worked together through some difficult times. We have to try to help burden carry each other's burden. Through good times and through bad times, we have to come together no matter how divided we might be. Now last week we gathered in this space and we were thankful for those that have gone before us in our All Saints celebration. We chose to see the lessons that were left for us to help us keep our lamps lit now in the present, but also to look to the future, to shine the light to the future. And we were encouraged by the stories of those that have gone before us and their lives. And so now this week, I want to continue our trend of thankfulness, for it is in that way that we lift each other up. It is in that way that we continue to keep our lamps prepared to be lit. And so this morning, we come here to be thankful for that that is our church staff. I want to invite them to come forward at this time to receive a gift, but um, I'm going to just read a bit that I've written for each of them, and I want to start with Jeannie Jacobs. Jeannie is our treasurer. But what you perhaps don't know about Jeannie is how meticulous she is in her work. She works hard to ensure that the books are clear and transparent. She encourages people to ask her questions, and she gives us a whole lot of effort. 
This year in particular, she has been inundated with extra paperwork as we prepared documents for the bank so that we could receive some of the PPP loans that the government has offered to keep people with staff going in these difficult times. And there's never really truly been a question of that, Jeannie, and I don't know that there's been enough thanks for that. And so, Jeannie, we thank you. I also want to draw your attention to Betsy Crudry. Betsy is our custodian, which at times can be a very thankless job. We take for granted how when we walk into the space, it is always clean, but that is because of Betsy. And for example, for the last two Saturdays, Betsy has been here preparing this place so that we could worship because we have had funerals and memorial services on Saturday. Because of COVID, she needs to wipe down each pew after the services and the memorial services so that we are safe to worship in this church. And not only does she do that, she also prepares the candles and the pyramids on the altar week after week, and we could not do it without her. And so Betsy, we say thank you. Shauna Worcester is probably the most visible person to our congregation. Her work is in our worship services. She plays the organ and the piano on Sunday mornings. She plays piano in the evening worship service. We, do, we don't all know music, but we do know when music is good and when it isn't. And Shauna, we thank you for you have blessed us in this last year. Shauna, too, has been busy the last few weeks playing these funerals. And so, Shauna, we thank you and you added so much to our worship. And lastly, and certainly not least, is Elizabeth, and some call her Beth, and others call her Petey. Elizabeth Lindstrom is our church financial secretary and our secretary. She answers our phones, she works with our mail, she does our bulletins, and she does our PowerPoint. She organizes our greeters and our liturgists and our ushers. She's currently working with the Wednesday lunch program schedule and she keeps me sane and organized, which is, well, as my wife will attest, a miracle in itself. She truly is a blessing to this church. And all too often, I will tell this congregation, oh, well, you just need to call into the office, or you just need to call into Elizabeth. And I sometimes question how many of us have had the opportunity to meet her. So I invite each of you to come forward, and I ask you, the congregation, if you could show your appreciation. for them and truly we just remain so gratefully thankful and so if again you would show your appreciation For each of these individuals, there also is a liaison in the church from the leadership team who, who works with these individuals when they have questions and when they have concerns. And to the leadership team, you have my thanks for being in that role along with me. And so thank you. And um, as well as that, I, we must, the leadership team, myself, and this staff, thank you, the congregation, because it's because of your support for this church that they're able to do this work for us and to help us do the work together. This is a team working together to spur each other on. And so you are a part of that. The leadership team is a part of that. The staff is a part of that. And I just wanna say thank you so very much. As we go and continue into our thanks, I ask you where is it that you have seen Christ in your lives this week? I'll start here because I'm going to have to edit this out of the um, online service because it doesn't, it isn't to be shared. But um, my sister is actively in labor. Um, she has, she's in Florida, and they were going to. She, the baby was due the fourth. They weren't going to induce her till the ninth. And my parents had their flight scheduled. They left yesterday. And as they landed, they received the news that she had gone to the hospital and had been admitted and that they were going to do it. I don't know how baby things work generally. Allison has had two C-sections. 
the head was completely out and now the baby's in backwards again. So I'm not sure how that goes, but I'm feeling for her in this moment. And so um, I'd ask for your prayers uh, for her in this time. But um, hopefully we'll have a blessing of a new baby boy in the near future. So are there others that can lift the prayers and concerns forward? And Joyce. Yes, Marjorie Kramer. Um, I can't recall where, but she has left the hospital and gone into... Um, what manner? Marion. Marion Manor. So um, keep, keep her in your prayers as she wasn't able to be released home from the hospital. Continue. Last week during our uh, service, uh, Bill Owens had not actively passed yet, but he, he was not doing well. Um, and he did pass last Sunday just after the service for our All Saints Day. And so Saturday, that was the service that we were... Um, celebrating here. So keep Betty and the family in your prayers. Um, they gathered yesterday for uh, a beautiful service that just, um, it was uniquely their own. Um, they asked me to, uh, uh, what, who did I sing again? Vin, I had to sing a Vince Gill piece, folks. That is not who I am, but um, I was thrilled to, to, to learn about Vince Gill and uh, to be a part of that with them and to celebrate his life. So... Um, but keep them in your prayers at this time. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you this day thankful because from all that the world gives and takes, we take thanks. And we take the opportunity to praise you and to worship you and know that all things come from you. And that all that is given to us, may we know that we do not need to give that any question to take it for granted. Because God, all that is there is through you. It is blessed by you and through you. We know this morning that there are those in our communities that are doing well. We also, too, pray for the Braid family, which I didn't mention Elmo earlier, but um, they have been quarantining because of a son that has COVID-19 and is not doing well, and we keep them in our prayers. Continue to keep our world in our prayers as we continue through this process of counting votes and knowing that our democracy stands strong. Lord, stand with us as a country and with us as a people. And God, in this space, might we know the wisdom of being community, of helping to spur each other along, to look to the wisdom of being thankful. And may we look forward anxiously to the blessing of Advent, to the coming of Christ into this world yet again, as we have the opportunity and the blessing each year to do. Gracious God, we come to you this morning knowing that our lamps are not prepared, but we come to this place knowing that you can fill our lamps with oil, that you can trim that bad part of the wick off, that we might have a light that shines out into this world, into our community, into our family and friends, that we might have a bright day, a morning horizon, a new chance to live. So gracious God, bless each and every one of these lives that are present here with us today those that are with us over the radio, those that are with us online, God, we thank you. And may we come to you in community with thanks and praise. We pray this in that name in which Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 